Hello, it's a pretty lovely, lovely evening once again from here and hope that as always you are absolutely, absolutely fine, happy and of course in fine spirits. So by now, you must have realized actually what exactly this session is meant for. Correct, if you happen to be a CMA final student preparing for CFR and having a new course, then obviously this particular session is for you and here we are going to talk about how we have to prepare, what should be our precise of a strategy so that we can face the upcoming examinations with confidence and with vigor. You must have also realized that I have already taken a series with respect to how to prepare for the summit 23 examination in Hindi and English version separately for the old courses. I have been receiving lots of messages come out with the series for new courses. So here is, I am actually with this particular session wherein I am going to discuss and going to give you some inputs, correct, how you need to prepare for your upcoming examination, December 23 examination I am talking about. Obviously this particular session is going to be in English and separately I will record a Hindi session, that's a different matter. So CMA final syllabus, correct, paper 18, corporate financial reporting. Basically this particular session is with respect to preparation methodology which we need to actually adopt what should be our precise strategy, correct? And as I call, what, what should be our master planning, actually, so that we do not confront any sort of jerks, hiccups, while tackling the examinations. Now, this is the course, if you look into the course, this, this is the course which is issued by your institute, correct? And this particular course uh, has been divided as far as CFR I am talking about, correct? CFR section A deals with Indian accounting standard and there are 12 Indian accounting standard which are part of your course. Then section B, although it is allotted 25% marks, but to be very honest with you, if you look into the trends of the paper, the recently held paper <coughs> in the month of July actually, uh, we saw actually these marking schemes hardly matters, correct? hardly taken care of, what I mean to say is. Anyway, your section B actually, it has got some practical, uh, practical chapters like valuation of shares and uh, of course uh, valuation of goodwill in between also written over here. Then financial instruments and NBFC. And as far as your section C is concerned, you must have noticed it deals with accounting for business combination and re restructuring. And uh, section D deals with your consolidated financial statements. And Section E deals with recent developments in financial reporting. It contains some theoretical chapters, which I will talk about later. And Section F, government accounting. So all in all, if you look into the, into what we call this particular course, you will find actually, as far as your Section E and F are concerned, this these two sections actually deal with theoretical chapters. And as far as your Section D is concerned, and Section C is concerned, and Section B is concerned it contains or comprises of practical chapters and needless to add that as far as section a is concerned it deals with your accounting standard now if i'm going to break up what you break up your entire course we can break it up in this manner just have a look down over here this is the breakup of your entire course as i told you your entire course can be broken into what we call three segments the first one is going to be the practical chapters correct as far as practical chapters is concerned here, you have to be very careful with respect to two or three things and you note it down and don't let it skip out of your memory. Of course, what is given to us is that business combination in corporate restructuring, generally we simply call it business combination. NDS 103 obviously deals with it. Needless to add, you will have to do this particular chapter comprehensively, very comprehensively and very deeply. But at the same time, and moreover, we have kept in our course nearly 60, 70 questions with respect to business combinations. Uh, and those who have subscribed to our courses, they must have actually uh, taken care of this particular fact that 60, 70 questions we have incorporated over there. Why I'm telling this that you need to be careful. Even though it is related to India's 103 and accounting standards are not your part, but still in order to, you know, in order to be towards the safer side and towards the safer ground, you need to do AS14 also. And especially under AS14, I'm talking about existing accounting standard. Remember one thing, AS are not part of your syllabus. But if you look into the trend of the examination, recently held paper, correct, of new course or new syllabus I'm talking about, wherein we saw that questions were tossed off from AS14. While doing AS14, you need to stress upon the 
aspects in the accounting aspects in the books of purchasing company you need to be very well jeffed up with the accounting which you are going to do as per as 14 correct with respect to amalgamation in the nature of purchase and amalgamation in the nature of merger question will be asked with respect to what we call books of accounts of acquirer or purchasing company as we call it under as 14 so besides india's 103 when you will do it you need to take care of this that in order to be uh, in order to have a comprehensive strategy you need to do as 14 also and you need to be very skillful and deft as we call it correct as far as accounting aspects in the books of purchasing companies concerning the books of purchasing company there are two methodologies that is uh, accounting depends upon the fact whether the case happens to be amalgamation in the nature of merger or purchase so you need to be acclimatized very well with these two terms that why i'm saying so because in the recently held paper we saw one question from as 14 also although questions were asked from business combinations no doubt about that but you need to be uh, you need to take that into account that you have to do AS14 also, correct? Similarly, many a time we tend to ignore internal reconstruction. It happens uh, because of the fact that either we have done internal reconstruction somewhere else in our earlier phases of education, so we may feel that it's quite an easy chapter, so we may handle it quite carefully. So among those of you who haven't done it in your earlier stages, then you must do internal reconstruction also. Make it a part of your strategy that you have to do along with business combination, AS14 and internal reconstruction very, very comprehensively. Is it clear to you or not? Because if you look into the what we call uh, course which is delivered to us by the institute, then sometimes we may tend to actually neglect AS14. So that is the reason why I am saying so. As far as your consolidated financial statements are concerned, Obviously, India's 110 deals with it and you will have to do very comprehensively, very deeply and very widely, no doubt about that. Uh, consolidated financial statement and in our course we have kept near about what we call 70, 80 questions in it and nearly 50, 60 questions we do in class. At the same time, consolidated financial statement when you are going to do to be, to be on the safer side, you must do AS 27, 28 and India's 111. Now you may wonder actually, sir, NDAs which have been prescribed because if you look into the list of the NDAs, these are the NDAs which are part of your course, correct? These are This is a list of NDAs which are part of your course and in this list there is no AS 27, 28 or NDAs 111. But, so that is the reason you may tend to skip this particular point otherwise. That is the reason why I am telling you that your strategy, your methodology should be absolutely precise. You should not room any, you should not leave any room, what we call uncovered. It is very important at final level, at professional level especially. So you have to cover every, every ground. So that is the reason besides India's 110, you must do AS 27, 28, 111. Is it clear to you or not? This is very important. And then these three chapters share-based payment and questions were asked from what we call 27, 28 and 111 to be very honest with you and all these all these uh, standards are very vital and important for you. Share-based payment in, in share-based payment. Now share-based payment India's 102 has been made part of actually India's list. See here, th these are the Indias, 12 Indias are part of your course but you consider it as a sort of practical chapter that is why I have redlined it. Is it clear to you or not? And all, and you can definitely expect a question. Even in the recently held paper, there was a question from share-based payment, and nearly we have kept for 60 questions, I think so, on the share-based payment. But then valuation of goodwill and valuation of shares. Obviously, you will have to do deeply, even though right from your beginning, you have been studying goodwill, isn't it or not? Until up to this particular stage. Goodwill hasn't left what we call uh, uh, you in the sense that it is almost what we call behind you like a shadow. So valuation of goodwill is very important. So valuation of goodwill and valuation of share you must prepare thoroughly. And some sometimes very complicated questions are asked in the examination. So you have to give it due uh, focus. Financial instruments. We have supplied nearly 11 lectures in financial instruments. And at the time, students were quite, some of the student complaints are in module, not much is given and you have given us 11 lectures only for financial instrument. 
Now, some of you must have now got an idea actually why we gave 11 lectures. The question was struck in the examinations. You could not have done if you wouldn't have gone through all the what we call 11 uh, videos which we have actually supplied with respect to this particular chapter. So, that is the reason actually financial instrument now for the new syllabus. For the old syllabus, we may say actually you do only one or two lectures. But at new syllabus, it is very important that you have to do financial instrument all the 11 lectures or 10 lectures, whatever we have supplied to you, and you must do it very comprehensively. Non-banking financial companies, it's a small chapter, and some provisional based questions may be tossed up in the examination from this particular chapter. Quite obviously, you will have to do it. See, remember one thing, when you're preparing for at this particular level, you have to prepare everything. Only thing is that you have to keep an eye actually where the surprising factors are. As I told you that when you do business combination, AS14 should be what we call in area, area of focus. Likewise, internal reconstruction. Similarly, when you are going to do consolidated financial statement, immediately after that, do AS2728 and in AS111. Those among you who have subscribed to our courses must have noticed actually why we have given AS2728 and in AS111. That is the reason, in order to put you on the safer ground. Then besides that, there are some theoretical chapter. I need not require to say anything and much about what we call theoretical chapter. Only thing is that you have to, because these are very small theoretical chapter, hardly of one or two pages, or sometimes even what we call one page. So 4P four, four bottom line reporting. In your old course, there is 3P bottom line, but nowadays we use 4P bottom line reporting. Besides that, sustainability reporting and global reporting initiative and business responsibility, sustainability report, integrated reporting. These are recently developed areas, correct? So some paragraph or some pages of your module have been devoted towards this and we have covered them theoretically very comprehensively. So I will advise you that you must go through all the theoretical chapters comprehensively, especially corporate social res responsibility reporting questions. Uh, you can definitely expect out of this. And similarly, there is another theoretical chapter recently added environmental social governance ESG as we call it and then human resource reporting is also newly added chapter correct and then value added statement and economic value added why I have redlined these two because if you look into your module only theoretical uh, theoretical part is given but very surprisingly in the examination we saw actually from economic value added and value added questions were asked and uh, we on our part have supplied some practical question even my book which is published by commercial law house contains what we call questions on value added statement and economic value added and market value added so these are the surprising area even though only theoretical part is given in the module but some questions were asked in the recently held paper so on such line you have to prepare that some practical questions may be asked from these chapters so accordingly you strategize your strategy so that you should not be at the surprising end when you are going to face the examination likewise reporting through xbrl people tend to actually skip this particular chapter it's vital you it's vital on our side we have covered we have given theoretic we have given lectures for every theoretical chapters also very comprehensively if you can listen to those lectures your entire theoretical part can be covered very easily and quarterly earnings call management a recently added chapters correct so all these are theoretical chapters it is very important to do very deeply widely incisively and very penetratively why because generally in, when in your question number one which is of mcq uh, so mcq nature if you have done your theoretical part very comprehensively and deeply then only you will be able to give the correct what we call answer now coming over to the third section and the final section that is in as now if you will look into uh, the course which we have supplied to our student actually we have covered very thoroughly and very deeply and we have spent a bit of time actually also no doubt about that but honestly speaking if we will <coughs> sorry if you look into the recent trend of your examination with respect to new syllabus which was held in the month of july what we saw actually questions were asked from India's, but those were very simple question considering the fact that uh, the manner in which we have covered so what my point is that you need not require to stretch yourself you need not require to waste so much of time in it but do a surfacial study that is very important so that you can at least handle if any question is asked from that so this is India's 8 correct accounting policies changes in accounting estimates and errors so this is a very simple NDS and NDS 12 is important 
we have covered very deeply nearly i think uh, i don't remember i think near about 20 to 25 case study or questions we have done in the class in class correct but you must do this particular standard thoroughly that is very important because you can get questions of any intensity out of it property plant and equipment now property plant and equipment that is almost similar to your existing accounting standard as10 if you have done as10 on this in your earlier phases of education honestly speaking that is enough and you are not going to get any surprising thing out of it although the question which was asked in the examination was a little bit you can say tough but not extremely tough it may also be uh, said now what your strategy should be with respect to leases and India's 115 India's 116 and India's 115 are very lengthy very lengthy Indian accounting standard and we have taken near about if I don't remember exactly in India's 16 I think there are 17 or 15 lectures so you need not require to spend your so much of time actually honestly speaking I don't think uh, any trick in any tricky question or tricky case studies would be asked now if you look into your recently held paper the question claimed that it was from india 116 actually in my opinion that question was almost from as 19 so if you have done as 19 and even if you haven't done it you do as 19 and you need not require to do leases then. correct i don't think any other what we call sort of case study would be asked from this so instead of wasting your time in doing india 116 because it will it is a very lengthy one so better you do simply as 19 even though accounting standards are not your part but still i would advise you you simply do as 19 so you will be escaped of what we call doing india 116 similar will be my view with respect to india 115 now as far as india 115 is concerned the question which was asked in the examination in my view although the question claimed that it was from india 115 technically it was from as7 the question was technically from as7 correct so instead of wasting your time in doing because it's a pretty long long very long what we call accounting standard so my advice to you is that whatever you have already done you also do as 7 and set and you can easily leave leases and revenue instead you do as 19 and as 7 you will be able to handle the question which will be asked in the examination correct barring these two standards because total there are 12 standard out of 12 standard i have already told you out of total 12 indias i have already told you instead of indias 116 you better do actually as 90 correct similarly indias 115 you better do as 70 as 7 sorry and indias 102 will get automatically covered because it is related to share based payment we will cover it under practical portion that means you will cover it as a practical chapter. The rest of the standard you must do thoroughly. There I am not going to tell you that you should leave any, any, uh, any what we call you should be selective or something like that. You should not leave any portion that is very important. So that means you have to do comprehensively effects of changes in foreign exchange rates. Correct. Similarly borrowing cost. Although if you have done your existing accounting standard AS16 that is fine. And if you have done your existing accounting standard AS11, it will help you definitely, no doubt about that, impairment of assets. That is similar to your existing accounting standard AS28. An intangible asset that is similar to your existing accounting standard AS26. Correct. Operating segment that is similar to your existing accounting standard 17. And this chapter is theoretical sort of chapter, fair value measurement. So all these standards you have to do comprehensively. Here I will not ask you to be selective. But my only what we call piece of advice to you is that you can simply escape what we call doing leases. Instead you do what uh, that is India standard 16. Instead you do actually AS19 and likewise revenue from contracts with customer. Instead of doing India 115, you can simply stress upon AS7. You will be able to handle the question in the examination. There is no point in going digging so deep with respect to leases and revenue from 
contracts with the customer, especially when we look into the uh, paper pattern and the paper which we recently saw with respect to news levels. This is my opinion and this, this is how you should go all about. So all in all, what I intend to say is that besides the course, uh, course content which are issued to us by the institute, you need to make sure that you are done up with AS14 very well and similarly internal reconstruction. Put it into your focus fold so that there are no surprising factor. Also, you must do AS 27, 28 and 111 to be on the safer side. And regarding what should be your strategy with respect to India, as I've already told you, you simply what we call delete. I should not say delete. You simply what we call uh, need not require to do leases. And there is no point in wasting so much of time. India is 116 and India is 115. But at the same time, you should and must do AS19 and AS7 so that uh, whatever questions are asked in the examination of these two, you can, you, are, you can manage them. Now, as you know, your first question will be compulsory. It will comprise of 10 questions of 2 marks, total 20 marks. Then in between, there will be 6 questions, question number 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7, total 6 questions. You are supposed to attempt only 4 out of these. Each question will carry 16 marks, so total 64. And question number 8 will also be compulsory. However, question number 8 will contain 3 questions. 8 plus 4 plus 4 will be the marking and total marks will be 16. So your question number 1 and question number 2 will be compulsory. Honestly speaking, you can get full 20 plus 16, 36 mark, provided you have you have comprehensively prepared the theoretical chapters. And besides that, this NAS section as per our strategy. And then in between, we will have what we call six question, wherein we shall have the choice and discretion to pick only four, pick only four questions, leave any two questions, and in in order to get good marks out of this particular section, I need not require to tell you that your practical portion should be absolutely impeccably done and there should be no room for any leeway. That means you have to do this practical chapter very, very comprehensively. Once again, I'm reminding you, when you are going to do your practical, don't forget to do internal reconstruction and AS14. However, on my side, I will try to upload a series on AS14. Perhaps in the month of September, I will be releasing it, AS14 and internal reconstruction. Not prior to that. It is not possible because time is the constraining factor for me also. And I will try to do AS27, 28 and AS 111. I will try to upload uh, the what we call entire series on this particular uh, section. Correct? Because from wherever you are taking uh, the coaching or classes, it is of paramount importance that these things should be under your what we call focus. So on that particular count, I will now stop this particular session. Hope that it must have given you a little bit of input, if not great inputs. Correct? So we take leave of you now and it's time to say goodbye.